Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I have another golf ball review for you today, and today we have the Titleist Velocity. Let's dive right in. All right, before I get into it, I will say this video has been sponsored by Craftsman Golf. I appreciate that. Uh, Craftsman Golf sent me a bunch of great, great goodies, you know, for the upcoming golf season, head covers, and even this really nice polo I'm wearing right here. Uh, so if you're in the need for some new equipment for the golf season coming up, go ahead and take a look. I have a link down in the description below. So listen, I've done a lot of the Titleist balls at this point. I reviewed one of the old Pro V1 models. Um, I reviewed uh, the Tour Speed, the Tour uh, Soft. I've done the True Feel a couple years back. I've kind of done a lot of them. I even did the AVX at one point, um, and it's been a lot of misses. You know, there's been a couple ones that are decent. Um, really, the, the true feel is the only one I feel I've recommended so far. Um, it just hasn't really been, you know, good for the average swing speed. And even though they do have a variety of golf balls, the problem with Titleist is they make some of their golf balls at plant A, plant B, plant C, um, and one of the plants has a very, very high standard, uh, essentially, for how the golf balls are made and what, what the requirements are for them to go leave the facility, things like that. And the other two, they're kind of like, eh. As you can imagine, the Pro V1 and the Pro V1X are made from you know the top tier facility. And then some of their other lesser balls are made from plant two, three, whichever ones they are, I can't remember at the moment. Um, that has caused some uh, issues as far as consistency. Um, I've had some weird feels. I've had some some mixed, you know, Titleist telling me the golf ball is supposed to do this. It really does this. It's just not been good. I haven't really had too many good Titleist reviews. Hopefully that can change because I have had a lot of people tell me that the Titleist Velocity is a great golf ball. Uh, it comes in at a price point of $29.99, which, you know, for a two-piece golf ball is on the more expensive side. Now, granted, it's not $37.99 like the Tour Soft is, which is astronomically high, um, but $29.99 still is going to be a premium price point for a nanometer two-piece golf ball. Um, I would have to put it at a very high standard, and I would have to say the numbers have to be really fantastic just based on the price point alone. Um, however, the golf ball basically promises two things, that you'll hit it really straight and you'll hit it really far. Uh, both something that a lot of meteor, um, uh, medium to uh, high handicappers really need in the game of golf. So um, that, that could be a good thing. Let's go ahead and get in the testing here. Let's see what we got. One other interesting thing about this golf ball I noticed is the compression's about an 84, which is really firm for a two-piece golf ball. I think that's actually the firmest I've ever seen. I've never seen a two-piece golf ball go above that, um, which is really crazy because I know the previous model I think was around an 80. Uh, and for a two-piece model with iometer, uh, that's really high on a compression. So that would lead me to believe that this golf ball actually is for more of your faster swingers. It's not 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 super fast, not 105, 110, not you know tour level, but you're you're 90, you're 95, you're somewhere in there, the average, you know, male swinging 90 to 95. Um, it seems like what that would be based on the compression number. So this could actually turn out being really good. So let's dive in and see how we get. Let's start off, of course, as always, with the design of the golf ball. We have, of course, the Titleist logo, which is a fantastic logo. I love that. This one, they did a nice little orange, too, to let you know immediately, hey, this is the velocity. That's what they do. And then if you come on the side there, you can see it says velocity. And I do like what they did with the alignment tool. They kept it simple. They did the kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. And basically what they did was they just made a nice thick black line there. Um, the arrows at the end, I usually don't like arrows, but this one is thick enough to where it doesn't really matter. This is actually a nice straight line. Um, and honestly, I, I think it's a great alignment tool, especially for beginners. I know with the Torsoff, they did one where they did a perpendicular to help line your face up, which was really good. Um, I kind of wish they would do that here as well, but it's still a good design. And overall, it does have a cheaper, more plasticky feel than your Pro V1 does or your Tor Speed does. Those golf balls are, of course, urethane. Um, but overall, it's still not a bad design design. It just kind of looks a little cheap. And uh, honestly, I think uh, Titleist especially could do more with the competition. They have the most market share. They have the most money. I expect them to be at the top. Am I a little hard on them? Yeah. All right. So let's go out to the chipping and punting green and let's see how we did out there. Okay, so Titleist Velocity out here, two-piece iometer golf ball. Um, I expect it to not have a lot of spin, and it really doesn't, but I will say it actually releases pretty true, which is awesome. There's a lot of forgiveness in the release when you're chipping around the green. Uh, so pretty much aim right at the hole and let it fly because you're not going to have any bass effect. You're not going to have the ball jumping on you left or right. Uh, it's going to roll wherever you end up hitting it. It's almost impossible to get the ball to go left or right depending on if you close or open the face, uh, which is great for beginners and intermediate players. I love that. I was actually able to get it in the couple, couple times just because of the level of forgiveness. 
Another thing I noticed is it does come off very high with the wedge. Uh, even just little chips around the green, you know, I mean, it's hard to gauge on a camera here, but if my normal's here, this one was up here. It just had a little bit more spring to get the ball up in the air because it doesn't have as much spin. Uh, so that way, necessarily, it doesn't fly across the green when you're just trying to chip it. So I really enjoyed that. I think Titleist did a phenomenal job there. Now with the putter, I will say this is one of the first Titleist golf balls I've ever tested that doesn't have the Titleist effect. If you don't know what that is, Titleist usually does a phenomenal job with their golf balls around the green, and they all have this really buttery, smooth feel uh, with a very true roll. Titleist has spent a lot of time, money, and energy on that, and it, it works. It works really good. This one does not have that. It actually feels a little bit more bouncy ball effect, but I think it's actually turned up a little too high on that because I got a little bit of the, uh, the chug effect. And if you don't know what the chug effect is, essentially what it is, it's kind of like if you're driving an old car and the fuel injector, the fuel doesn't get in there and it kind of chugs, you know, and then like it sputters. That's kind of what the golf ball does. Now it's not super bad on this one, but hitting it off with a mallet putter, I did notice it kind of chugged. It didn't have a very true roll. Um, it bothered me. It's not something I'd want to putt with for sure. Now on the other end of that, hitting it with the blade putter I tested it with, it actually rolled a lot more truer and it was pretty loud. It actually had a loud click. It was actually pretty firm. Uh, it didn't feel like a Titleist golf ball at all. So this isn't going to feel like your normal Pro V1. It's not going to feel like a Tour Speed. It's not going to feel like a Tour uh, Soft. It's not going to feel like any of that. It's actually got its own feel to it. It's a little bit firmer than what I'm used to with a Titleist golf ball. And I feel like with the mallet, it just doesn't have a consistent enough roll. And the forgiveness wasn't there either. So kind of a mixed bag in that regard. I think Titleist did a phenomenal phenomenal job as far as the wedge and the chipping and the forgiveness there, but with the putting it kind of leaves something to be desired, which is really weird from Titleist. They're usually really spot on with that. All right, so not bad. That's kind of what I expected it to do. Now I will say when it comes to the feel of this golf ball off the clubs, I was immediately impressed because if you've ever watched a Titleist review from me before, I talk about the Titleist feel. Titleist makes all their golf balls have this specific feel. It's kind of hard to describe to you, but if you've hit a Titleist ball and you're used to it, you know it. And there's a reason for that. It's kind of good marketing really. If you are a Titleist loyalist and you hit the golf ball, you're going to recognize that feel. It's the Titleist feel. You know, the Pro V1 feels that way, the Tour Speed feels that way, the Tour Soft feels that way. This also has this feel. When you go to play a different golf ball, immediately you're going to hit it and go, uh, that feels weird. That does not feel like what I'm used to. Kind of a marketing thing, you know, it, it, it deters people from switching from Titleist because they get used to that type of feel um, and they don't want to leave. And so they, it kind of holds them. So it's smart in that regard. However, if you're not a Titleist loyalist and you're just hitting it a bunch of different golf balls like I am and then you switch to a Titleist and hit it, it feels weird. It's definitely abnormal. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's just a, a weird feeling. It almost feels dead to me. Um, it's not soft. It's more like a balanced medium and it just feels really, really dead coming off the club. Not the case here with the Velocity. It actually feels like a normal golf ball, like the majority of the ones I test. It comes off the club very fast. It's spongy. It has a little bit of bouncy ball effect to it. Uh, I really love how it comes off the club, and I was really surprised. As soon as I hit it the first couple times, I thought, well, maybe that's a fluke, and I hit it a couple more, and I thought, well, that's awesome, because I just don't have this type of response with other golf balls. Usually they're all you know, that dead feeling, but this one really seems to jump off the club. So with that, let's hope these numbers are good. Let's dive in. Uh, the 9-iron, we've got 94.1 on your speed. That is awesome. My uh, average is only 91, so that's like three over. That's amazing. 130.2 on your total distance. That's how I gained four yards. 124.6, gained another four yards. And 20.8, it actually launched low. So that's really interesting. It actually launched low, but I was able to get a lot more ball speed out of it and a lot more distance. So essentially, it's going to keep it out of the wind. It's going to go straight, and it's going to go far. So, so far, both things Titleist claimed, that's a really good way to start out. I have not had that type of success with a Titleist golf ball from the rip, except maybe the true field, but that's been a minute or two. 5,600 on your spin, that is really, really, really low. I mean, really low. 108.8, that is actually really good. Very fast ball speed. 166.8 is by far a new record for me when it comes to the 7-iron. I've never averaged that high before. Uh, heck, that's darn near, I mean, that's getting into my 6-iron usually level. That's awesome. 155.7 on, you know, the, the carry, which is amazing, and then 16.6. Uh, so there is a couple things here. So the velocity does promise to go really far and really straight, and it is doing both of those things really well. Um, the 5600 spin is a little rough because you're not going to be able to stick a green really well with it. Um, it's probably going to have to be, if the flag's in the in the middle or the back, you're going to have to aim for the front of the green. Um, if it's on the front, of, you might have to run it up there. Uh, it's just not going to spin in that regard, so it's really more of a distance golf ball. But where Titleist is kind of fibbing a little bit, or maybe just I'm not able to get the claim, 
is they told me that this golf ball was a very high launch golf ball, the highest launching golf ball they really make. It's designed to just get high in the air and go far. But so far, with the 9-iron, with the 7-iron, I've had two of the lowest launch angles that I've ever recorded. So we'll have to keep an eye out for that. We'll get into the 5 hybrid here. We'll see if that continues. 4180 on your spin, which is just slightly above average, which is great. You'll be able to stick a green with the hybrid. 117.9, so that's actually really good. That's above average. 195.1, that's above average as well. Awesome. 178.4, all above average. And then a 12.2 launch. So there it is again. That is extremely, extremely low. When I was testing the golf ball, I really had trouble getting it off the ground. It really wants to launch low. It's a low launching, penetrating golf ball, which isn't a bad thing. It's actually really good. It could really serve a purpose. But the problem is when you advertise it as being a really high launching golf ball and it launches really low, that's kind of an issue, especially if you're someone who bought it specifically trying to get the ball more up in the air. I would say probably you're looking at more of a uh, slow swing speed, 85 less, that might get it up in the air, but it'd be hard to do that without testing it. Getting into the driver, we have 2505, so we continue right along with that. Really, really low spin. So this golf ball is just going to go really straight and long. Uh, 237 on your uh, distance, which is a little below my average. 133.1, which is a little bit uh, below my average, not much. 216 on the carry, which is a little bit below my average. But there's the culprit right there at the end, and that's the 13.2 launch. So not that this golf ball wasn't fast enough, it didn't, it, that it just couldn't get there. It's that that launch angle was really, really low. And it just that's, that's what the golf ball wants to do. It wants to launch low. So overall, it launches really low, and I was able, I mean, most of the time I'm hitting my driver about 15 and a half to 16. That's where I want it. That's going to add about five, six, maybe even 10 yards, to be honest with you. So these numbers would have been a lot better if the launch angle had increased a little bit. Okay, so getting into the durability real quick, Titleist always does a really good job. Uh, they're not the best, I test, for sure. I test a lot of great golf balls, um, so they're not the best by any means, but they always are at least good. They're very consistent, and they're very good. This one is no different. I would actually say this is one of the better ones I've tested uh, from the Titleist line. It has a really good feeling all around it. There's minimum scuffs. There's really no deep scrapes. Um, you can tell a little bit, but boy, it's really good. I would say three and a half or a four out of five. It's definitely going to get you through a full 18. Uh, after the 18, I'd probably scrap it but as long as you don't lose it you should be fine which if you're hitting a golf ball in this price range anyway or this type of golf ball you're probably going to lose at least a couple around uh, so i don't anticipate on that happening so overall really good all right, so closing thoughts, who's the golf ball for? Well, I'm really excited, guys, because honestly, this is one of the few Titleist golf balls I can actually put my sticker of recommendation on. Uh, most of the time, it just doesn't seem to be worth it with the price. It, it just seems really overpriced, and you're not getting a lot of golf ball, um, and it just ends up not really working out, and there's, there's other options I can offer. This one actually does perform really well. It's only it's $29.99, so it is a little bit pricey, but it's extremely low spin, uh, it's extremely straight, and it goes extremely far. And that was consistent throughout all the clubs, whether it was the short irons, wedges, a uh, hybrid driver, everything was really well. Now, who is the golf ball for? Well, there is a specific market here. I wouldn't just go out and get this golf ball if you want a great forgiving golf ball that ticks all the boxes. There's a couple other ones I'd probably put above that. However, if you need a golf ball that's going to keep out of the wind, you have issues with it ballooning up in the air and catching that wind, this golf ball is going to launch really low for you. That's a really penetrating flight. Um, you know, we have a lot of wind here in Florida. I'm only a couple miles from the coast. So I could see myself using a golf ball like this occasionally if that wind's really picking up. I could keep it out of there, keep it low, um, and just keep it running on the ground. That's really good. Also, if spin's really not an issue, if you're someone who's just trying to hit really long distance and you don't want backspin yet, you're not someone who strikes the irons consistent enough to really backspin it or get it to curve left or right, again, a great option for you there because there's no backspin. You're going have to run everything up. It's kind of golf simplified. So uh, great two-piece beginner golf ball, intermediate as well. Um, there's going to be better uh, options for people who are low handicap, even low, you know, 10 and under. There's going to be way better options. For the higher handicap crowd, it's going to be a really good option, all things considered. Guys, as always, keep watching to keep saving. I appreciate it and keep learning. Until next time.